Greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to the Wednesday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. <clears throat> this morning we are in Psalm 119, the longest psalm in the Bible, in the book of Psalms. And I encourage you to, to read through the entire psalm today. Um, but this morning we are going to focus our attention on a few verses, verse 73 through to verse 77, and reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you and we praise you. For you are the God who meets us where we are in the midst of life. You comfort us, you correct us, you discipline us, and you pour out your grace and your favor upon us. And so, God, as we journey through this day, may we do so living according to your will, speaking your words of life, words of truth, and dem demonstrating your grace in everything we say and do. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Psalm 119, verses 73 to 77. You made me, you created me. Now give me the sense to follow your commands. May all who fear you find in me a cause for joy, for I have put my hope in your word. I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You disciplined me because I needed it. Now let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised me, your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies, so I may live. For your instructions are my delight. This psalm is a, follows a literary uh, structure. Uh, each stanza of eight verses uh, is, uh, st um, starts with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And each line in each stanza uh, begins with the letter of, of that particular stanza. So in this case, verses 73 through to 88, uh, to 80, pardon me, um, is under the heading Yod. That is the, the Hebrew letter. And so each verse begins with, the letter Yod. Um, that's about the extent of my Hebrew scholarship. So, but the the reality is that this um, this psalm uh, has a lot to say to us about our relationship with Almighty God, and it is uh, it is this psalm that that speaks to us in a variety of ways speaks God's truth to us in a variety of ways. So the psalmist begins, You made me, you created me. Now give me sense to follow your commands. So he's acknowledging that, that, that we are God's creation. It is God who made us. It is God who breathes life into us. And so he's praying that, that he would receive the, the sense or the wisdom, the courage to follow God's commands. He says, may all who fear you find in me a cause for joy, for I have put my hope in your word. What a powerful statement that is. That, that for all who look upon us, do they sense the joy of the Lord in us? Do they, do they look to us and find a cause for joy? Or do they look at us and think, wow, he's a Christian. What a drag. I don't want to be like him because he's miserable and goes around, you know, angry all the time. That's not what being a, a follower of Christ is all about. 
Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. He doesn't say, be miserable and heavy laden and weighed down with the, with the, with the worries and concerns of the world and to, to look miserable. No. When he says, take up your cross and follow me, it's, he's taking, it's telling us to take up the joy of the salvation that we have received from him and follow him. In other words, there's joy in the Lord. There's joy because of the cross of Christ. And that joy should be evident in everything we say and do. That we, as we bear witness to the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we do so with joy and thanksgiving and praise to Almighty God. Not with, with, with anger and with downcast faces and looking like we're carrying the world on our shoulders. And why? The psalmist says, For I have put my hope in the Lord. That's where our joy comes from. When we put our hope in the Lord, we, we experience His peace and His joy and His love and His forgiveness, His grace. He says, I know, O Lord, that your regulations are fair. You discipline me because I needed it. See, we, we serve a loving and gracious Heavenly Father. And just like every parent, we need to, to discipline our children. We need to punish our children for their mistakes so that they can learn how to live properly in this world. To have a, an ethical and moral understanding in this world. And, and I would argue part of the, the reason why we are seeing so many problems today in our world is because parents have not disciplined their children. Because the generation following mine, where my parents disciplined me, and I needed it, believe me, I needed it, but the next generation said, no, spanking your children is wrong, punishing your children is wrong, disciplining your children is wrong, you need to let them be children, you let them... Let them be free. Let them let them make their mistakes and learn from their mistakes and, and everything will be fine. Well, we are now reaping the benefits of, of generation after generation of a lack of discipline, a lack of, of correction. And so the psalmist says, you disciplined me as a loving father. God disciplined him because he needed it. We need the discipline of God. We need the conviction of God. We need the correction of God in our lives so that we can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. He says, now let your unfailing love comfort me just as you promised me, your servant. See, discipline is an act of love. It demonstrates that you actually care for the person you are disciplining. Can't tell you how often I heard my parents say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. But it was because they loved me and they wanted me to be the best person I could be that they disciplined me and corrected me. But I never once with all the spankings and all of this being sent to my room and, and all of that, I never once questioned whether my parents loved me. I knew they did. And I knew that there were consequences for my mistakes. I knew that there were consequences when I stepped out of line. It took me a while to figure out that if I didn't want to get spanked, then I, didn't, I shouldn't step out of line, but that's another story altogether. I never questioned their love for me because I knew that their, that their discipline 
was be of me was because they loved me and they wanted the best for me. And that's what the servant is saying here. You disciplined me because I needed it. Now let your unfailing love comfort me. Yes, I'm feeling the sting of discipline. But now comfort me with your love. Surround me with your tender mercies so I may live, for your instructions are my delight. See the shift? It doesn't stay with the discipline. It doesn't stay with the punishment. It, it moves beyond that to the love and the mercy and the grace of Almighty God, which he has promised us and which he pours out upon us. He says, surround me with your tender mercy so I may live, for your instructions are my delight. God's instructions need to be our delight, friends, for that is how we live in his will according to his will, according to his commands. So we can live courageous lives for Christ, with Christ, in Christ. And so whatever you're facing this day, friends, ask the Lord to help you. Ask him if there's anything in your life that is not in keeping with his will. And ask him to help you with it. Ask for his discipline. That you may be more and more like Christ each and every day. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you that you discipline us and you correct us and you shape us and you convict us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And you help us to be the followers of Christ that you have made us to be, you have created us to be. Lord, the desire of our hearts is to walk according to your will, to live by your commands and your decrees. For we know that they are right and just and that you are abounding in steadfast love. So God, we pray that you will guide us and uphold us this day Lord, that you will direct our steps and that everything we say and do will be for your glory and lift high the name of Jesus, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures from Psalm 120. So, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.